Okay, um, thanks for joining us today. Um, this is our first webinar, so um, as you can tell, we've um, had a few few issues trying to get it all sorted out, but we're thrilled to be joined by um, Anna Ratto, Anna Rosas, and Thomas Rogerson from Ramos Pinto, who are going to take us through uh, the history of the winery and then look into the estates and the wines and the vineyards that they own in the Douro. So I'll hand you over to Anna Ratto just now, um, and she'll start the presentation. Hi, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys. I might know some of you. Um, I'm very sad I ca that I can't visit you personally, but uh, I'm looking forward. <laughs> so um, just going through, obviously I am, I am uh, the least important part of the company, so uh, I'll just do like a three minute presentation about the, the Ramos history. And then I will hand you over to Ana Rosas. Uh, she's the master blender, um, fifth generation of, uh, of the founder. She's in charge of the, the port wine and uh, Thomas Rogerson, who works with Anna also in the, in, in the, in the port wine um, blending. So um, starting with this presentation, Christine, please, could you, thank you. So that is us. Um, that is us, uh, our house. So uh, Ramos Pint was founded in 1880. So we are actually, um, this year, we're, we're celebrating our 140, and hi, <laughs> um, 140 anniversary. Um, and um, uh, we, the, the vision of Adriano was actually uh, at the time, there were already a lot of other producers of port, and his vision was to differentiate through quality. So um, at that time, there were a lot of negociants of, of, of port wine, and he, um, just in the beginning, almost uh, in the beginning, uh, he decided that he wanted to uh, start buying um, estates to be able to control the quality that went to the to the bottles and not just uh, going uh, and buying the wine. So uh, in 1919, actually, uh, he bought the first Quinta. So you can see here in the map, please, Christine, go back, please. Thank you. So you see here the map of, uh, of, the, of the Dor region. You have the, the Regua, which is the it used to be responsible for the, for the biggest part of the production of port up until 50 years ago. There, the reason is because there was a bit of more rain in this, in this area. Uh, then there is the Sima Corgo, which is uh, the area of Pinhão, where most of the, you know, the historical companies have their, their major uh, estates. And that's where we have two of our uh, very important estates. So, Quinta do Bom Retiro and Quinta da Ortiga. And then Douro Superior, the biggest part uh, of the Douro region, who um, a long time ago it was not uh, used to, uh, to produce port, uh, although they, they had obviously vineyards, but uh, because uh, the wine was transported by, 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 by the, the river uh, and the river was not uh, couldn't uh, couldn't uh, carry the, the the wine so nobody would go for this area and this area is, is very good because it is uh, less uh, um, steep and so you 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 can have uh, very good vineyards and that's where we bought two quintas quinta dos bons Arts and quinta de erva moira so we could see next um thank you so like I said, uh, these two uh, quintas, this is in uh, the Quinta do Bom Retiro, our main uh, quinta uh, in the Cima Corgo. And uh, in, this, uh, in this quinta, we have our uh, vinification center for port. Uh, please, Christine. Okay, so we, you can see here the, some of the lagars. Uh, so this quinta has 110 hectares, and we we do our 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 ports. Um, 
So Quinta da Urtiga is just adjacent to, and some of you that have been in the Douro, in, in, in Bovetir, you know that this, this small Quinta, Quinta da Urtiga, is uh, about four hectares. It's all pre phylloxera um, uh, terraces. So, and it's, uh, it's all um, mixed with uh, different uh, grape varieties. We have uh, been doing a study uh, and, uh, and implementing a geo reference to, to, to identify each grape variety. And, and up until now, we have identified around 55 different uh, grape varieties. Um, all mix. Then, please, Christine. Thank you. Then we have Quinta dos Bons Ares. Uh, now you can see from the photo that the, the color of the soil is different. So, and obviously this photo was also took by a drone. So it looks like it's flat, but actually it's 600 meters high. And, um, and the, the soil is granite soil. So we bought this Quinta in this very kind of windy uh, slope because uh, just for, for production of door wines, steel wines, uh, we, don't, we don't use it to produce port. Um, 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 we've had a question come through um, from Attila Roos. He's asked, um, are there any Quinta de Ortiga single Quinta bottlings? Um, and if not, is there any plan to create such a cuvee? Thank you, Attila. Nice to see you. <laughs> um, yes, there are there are some plans in the near future. You 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 are uh, you you are you are guessing our thoughts. <laughs> so yes, in the near future, we intend to do something specific because, like like the vision of our of our founder, and then later on when we were bought in nineteen ninety. By, by Louis Rudder, the philosophy is the same, to, to do terroir wines, we, we want uh, as, many, as many times as possible to give the location to the wines, to the terroir, the spirit of the terroir to the wines that we do. So actually, yes, we are going to launch uh, in the very near future uh, a unique wine from, 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 uh, from Urtiga, which is Consider the a parcel, uh, kind of a parcel wine, and we obviously also intend to expand uh, a little bit on on the parcel wines in 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 some of our uh, quintas, uh, but on the still on the still wine uh, side, on the port side, uh, we 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 do produce a quinta do bom retiro vintage port and uh, Quinta uh, Derva Moira vintage port and also a 10 year old from uh, Erva Moira and the 20 year old from, from, um, from Bon Retiro, which Anna will explain better because uh, it's exactly the, this, this, this uh, vision of, of giving what the, the, the Quinta uh, uh, gives you in, in, in the bottle. Uh, now, I think I answered. Uh, so moving on for the for the pillar. So our first pillar is the the own vineyards, own production. Um, so the second the, the the second is organic and sustainable farming. Uh, we have twenty five hectares of organic farming, and uh, two and a half on biodynamic, exactly in Quinta da Ortiga. And uh, then coming in the vinification center of the Doro, uh, it makes sense to talk about the third pillar, which is the technical research. Uh, we have been uh, studying uh, a lot, as you know, uh, regarding grape varieties, regarding uh, mechanization, regarding uh, um, the, the traditional presses, robots, irrigation, uh, so this is something that we are, we are that we are very concerned and uh, and connected with. So if you can move to the last quinta, which is uh, which is quinta quinta d'erva moira, uh, it was called the first model quinta of the Douro, uh, first single grape variety per plot, first quinta all vertical planted. Um, so we actually started, and and some of you that have been in Bon Retiro, 
we have used Bonretiro to make the essay, to, to, to make the research, and then apply in terms of, of uh, the um, types of grape varieties, but also the mechanization, the, the vertical planting, to then start planting uh, Quinta de Erva Moira. So Quinta de Erva Moira is about uh, 223 hectares, 178 of, of, of vines. Uh, and it's low altitude, so. Uh, now, we also have, as you know, uh, the museum. So it's still family managed, this, the, the company, although we were bought, again, we celebrate this year, the 30th anniversary of, uh, of, uh, of being bought by, by and joining the, the Louis Rutherford family. Um, so we still have George Roses uh, from from the fifth generation that is the CEO and Anna Roses uh, that she is the the port wine blender as I said so fifth generation and this is an example of our art collection uh, that you can see uh, in two of our museums one in Gaia uh, so near Porto and one in Erva Moira and we also have a visitor center for for tourism in um, in, in Gaia. Can you please? Yes. So this is, it was bought in 1990 uh, by Louis Radra, Um and it was very very good for us. Uh, so just I will hand you through uh, now to Anna Roses and Thomas. I will just leave you with the three things that uh, after the four pillars, I have three things to say about the wines, which is we 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 are looking for. Uh, obviously, uh, consistency in quality in, across the range, uh, the best possible relation between quality and price, and uh, make unique wines, uniqueness wines and blends. So the art of blending, Anna will tell you about thoroughly um, now. I, I will I will leave you with this uh, with this picture that explains very easily the difference between the Tonys and the, and the Rubies uh, of our sellers. So thank you, thank you very much. So hello everyone, we're going to talk about sport. Sport in terms of vinification, blending and, and uh, vineyards in, in our perspective, how, how interesting is for us doing port because port is quite magic is everything you have in a wine you have terroir you have vineyards of course everything starts in the vineyard but then you have another part of of, of of port which is completely different from other wines we have years and years wines laying down here in our in our cellars and we have to take care of these wines and raise them to be a, a, a 10 year old a 20 year old a young vintage so this is a completely different world so starting from the three part uh, three types of white uh, of ports we have the white ports in in the, port, in the port wine all the ports come from white grapes you can have a very traditional white port which is fermented like a red with all the branches in feet and you have a very concentrated wine normally is a very very sweet wine like our lagima and then you can have it like a white wine, but but then add the brandy uh, at the more or less middle of the fermentation, and then age in barrels or in big wooden vats, and this will take us to our first wine, which will be. You don't have the wines, but we need the wines. At least we are more relaxed to talk. If you can drink. Two bottles, one for each. <laughs> so, um, funnily enough, all the white grapes at Ramos Pinto for port are planted at Erva Moira, which is the warmest um, sub region of the Douro. So, what we look for is the highest slopes or the most fertile soils for the white grapes. So it's a complete 100% Doro Superior port. During vintage time, we spend all our time in the vineyard as all the winemakers all around the world. 
that we have to decide the, the right time for picking up the grapes in a, in a white vineyard, uh, for instance, from Khadigat, when we want to pick the grapes for port, and before that, when our colleague winemaker wants to pick the, the, the grapes for, for Doro wines, for Bush Quinte. So it's, it's quite tricky to decide which, which wines of, of the grapes are going for one of us. And uh, sometimes we will even split uh, a, a, a plot between both Bush Quintes and, and, and Port Wine. So this is always very challenging to decide when, because we need to have more alcohol in, in uh, potential alcohol in terms of, of port, but also we cannot lose the freshness or we'll have something that's sweet and sour and we don't want it. So our first wine, Thomas. So the Avidian White Reserve is aged um, in the smaller port casks. So they're quite large compared to Barriques, but 650 liters on average. And what we have is a slow microoxidation of the port, and um, it will gain in complexity. And with time, the wine and the fortifying spirit will um, marry with each other. And what you will get is high complexity, high uh, concentration, and um, different kind of aromas coming through. And uh, it's a blend of younger wines, around three, four years. Uh, older wines from 10 to, to 15, 18 years. So we have an average of around seven and a half, eight and a half years. And finally, to give it some extra flavor like salt and pepper, I think you use two very old wines, the 65, which gives some complexity and really rents you and the very wonderful white 64, an amazing one, one year apart, one is only old, the other one is an amazing one, it has everything, nut flavor, uh, enough freshener, so that's the, the final touch we use in the blend of this uh, white reserve. As you cannot see, but uh, we serve from another bottle, really, really chilled, uh, and the wine, I have to say, at this moment is really wonderful. And we <laughs> so, so we tend to think of this one as an, a more of an aperitif port, served chilled before before the dinner, um, probably pairing with um, salty aperitifs. I don't know, roasted almonds, things you can find in the Douro Valley. Uh, he's not talking about cheese because he doesn't like cheese, but everything we have as a uh, uh, first first uh, dish with some gratin or, or mozzarella or whatever, everything. This is a lovely wine for cheese, really, really, really good. But unfortunately, he's quite strange. He doesn't like any kind of cheese. <laughs> so, then we move into the port wines, tannins and uh, to the red port tannins and rubies. So as I, I was saying in the beginning of the vintage, we are more or less going up and down in the vineyards, tasting grapes all around, decide the exact moment where we want to pick our grapes. And then we try to vinificate almost uh, everything we can in Lagar in a very traditional uh, way. So food um, trading. And in a way, it's very, uh, very old-fashioned, very primitive. The way we, we, we all, all, all around us, uh, the port wine trade. We, we vinif vinified the, the port wine. It's only we want to extract the maximum uh, of uh, of tannin and, and flavor and color and everything, but in a very, very short time. So you have uh, to try to do what they do in the ancient way food trading in a small agar with a roll machine or in a cube to, to try to, 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 to do the mix, open cubes with also uh, uh, something to trade the, the, the grapes. And then in two, three days, four days maximum, we attain the level of sugar we want and stop the fermentation, adding brandy. 
and basically that's it. Then we have a lot of small corrections to do if the alcohol level is, is correct, if you need some tartaric and everything. And basically, that is the beginning of uh, a 10 years old and also of a vintage. So they, they, they start exactly at the same. Then the way we are going to work with this wine and live with this wine is going to, to bring us to completely different families from Tonys to, to, to vintage. Yes, yeah, so we can imagine that all the ports look like young ruby ports at, at harvest and it's how we're going to age them in the cellar. Um, that's how we, we create and craft our styles afterwards. Um, and just to give a little bit of context, you can see the three ruby ports. Um, one reserve ruby, which will be aged in large wooden vats for roughly five years, multi-vintage. So you can go and find different attributes from different vineyards and different years and craft the, the profile of this port. The LBV, you're going from a single harvest, single year, and when you're going from a single year, you need all the attributes to be coming from this. It needs to be a good year. You need the structure, the tannin, the aroma, the complexity, the length. Um, and what you do with the LBV is you create your vintage style. So foot trodden, legar fermented port. You age them a little bit further for four years compared to the two years of it aging for vintage. And this rounds off a little bit the wine, making it more approachable um, once it's bottled. And um, important to point out that it's an unfiltered, unfined and unfiltered LBV. So we will um, bottle them with a long cork and it will give you an idea about um, it will improve with time then you have the tonics in the tonic port the objective is to create a, a house style and in our in our case we only have our house style and also our terroir style because we uh, for our 10 years and our 20 years, we use only one quinta in, in both of, of, of the wines. So 10 years from Evermore, Bortiru for the 20 years. And Etoni is something you, you want to have uh, the style of the house. And as I say, also the style of, the, of, of Evermore. So it's quite uh, earthy, hot, very uh, uh, aromatic. And we, we've several vintage, but it's a multi-vintage wine, we, we try to reproduce what we have uh, in, in, in the earth, in, in the, what is the aroma of Evermore, and at the same time, what is the aroma of a very old port, of a 10 years old lady. So it's something uh, quite unique in our uh, uh, to have um, tonis, dated tonis from only one place. And it's, uh, we always had the Bortiru, and we, uh, many years ago, our 10 years old was mainly from Bortiru and Vashkorg. And then when Eva Mora was already mature to produce uh, 10 years old, we, you, we moved to Eva Mora and have only one from Eva Mora. This is quite difficult in a way because they are very concentrated wines, they have a, a lot of color. Uh, they don't lose very easy the, the color when they are aging in the barrels, which is very good for a vintage, not so good for a tonic. It's not so uh, orange, orange peel, and more uh, it, it's more the reddish that. And also we have to to get it a little bit older, around 12 years old, to have more more of the flavors what is supposed to have in a 10 years old. I think it's. Again, we need to have it chill it. Another one from the fridge. One for you, my dear colleague. When we are blending a tonic, it's really completely magic. You, you, need, you have all those wines laying down and 
what is the style of the house is the way we we learn how i learn and how i try to teach thomas to blend the wine so we have more or less we have different terroirs from houses to houses uh, but we have exactly the same the, the same uh, utils in the in the tasting room we can blend with a younger wine we can blend with an older wine he can go we can give the wine a walk for a, a, another barrel we can uh, replace the barrel uh, change barrels go to a big wooden vat but they are exactly exactly the same things we can do from houses to houses how they are so different because of the orange of the grapes and then how we are trained to in every situation decide which is the best of for, for your wine maybe in a, if you have exactly the same house the, the same wine or the same type of wines from houses to houses you still have different different wines because we are trained maybe in in one situation we think the wine is a little bit tired and we blend it with a younger wine and maybe in another house they do exactly the opposite they only going to to change it from one other barrel and don't blend it with another wine so every every small thing we do in the tasting room is going to to, to to finally have which is our style house it's nothing magic it's only working and in fact it's a port is a very very humanized wine we have years and years of, of wines laying down. We still have wines in barrel, very small quantities, but we still have wines in barrel from, from the, 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 the beginning of the 20th century. And when I start working here, we still have from the 18th century, from the, uh, the 19th century, from the last uh, decades, decades of the uh, 19th century. So it's completely unbelievable working the tasting room for blending at 20 or 30 years with wines that your great grandfather has vinified. This unique. You have a blend in champagne, but it's comparative to port is small, 18 years. It's in really big for champagne, but for us, it's 100 years. We can go wherever. And we have with every different uh, vintage, uh, uh, every di uh, different uh, uh, batch of, of uh, 10 years or 20 years, we have to have the same character we had on the, on the ancient and we need to have on, on the next. So it's continuous. We really need to work on the tasting room, only tasting to understand what we need to do in all the, all the wines. Uh, I noticed a comment about the piano. So um, in the tasting room, this is basically, um, we have a small bottle, uh, there we go. We have a small bottle of every single batch that we have aging in the cellar. So when you're blending tawny port, this is really important because you've got your whole stock here and you were able to pull, there are over 250 batches, basically, to produce the small amount of wine that we are releasing every year. And we're able to pull from these, um, these batches that we're always tasting and blending and taking care of to be able to produce these tawny ports. In fact, making a port, a tawny port is really, uh, uh, an art is like uh, like a composer who we have all our different uh, instruments, different notes, and we have to compose a wine at 10 years, at 20 years, at 30 years, or whatever we want to do. And this is it, the, the way we work in the tasting room is so such an uh, old fashioned way. We always have three generations in the tasting room, uh, a very young fellow taster, me, which is the dinosaur, and another one, and at least three generations, because we need to have continuity. You can see on the port wine houses, the change from wine and the, from houses to houses, marketing, salesmen, everything. But when you, you start in a port wine house in the tasting room, you die on that tasting room because you cannot go to another tasting room and change the style of, of, of that house, that particular house. So this is really incredible the way 
I, I learned this, this kind of testing with my uh, uncle and then with my cousin. And so after uh, six years, uh, seven years, I'm, a, I'm the master blender. And of course, we need to have some younger. Uh, so we have now Thomas testing with uh, Suarez and me and also the rest of, of, the, of the technical team. And we do taste almost every year, one hour, one hour and a half. And most of the time, it's only to check how the stock is, how, how they are, if they need some changing, if they need some air, if they need uh, only to, to go to a balsero and rack the wine, or if they need a, a blending. And then also different we have in the in the in the tony ports, which is not like the vintage ports or the or the the, the red wines and the white wines on the other. It's when we are blending, they need time to achieve balance. So we have to do a lot of small uh, uh, samples and test and retest for several days until they achieve uh, balance. Because in, in the first moment, the, the first moment when you uh, add one. Wine, uh, older wine to a younger wine, it will be completely no, nothing will be in, it, so, or the wine, the old wine will die completely, or will be dominant, and and so they they need to time time to get used to each other, and when we our tasting notes are more or less the same, we know it's the, which is the the. Equilibrium, equilibrium uh, balance, balance the, the balance, and we know that it can be reproduced on, on, on the cellar. So that's why Tony takes so long to, to, to taste and to do, besides the very long time they are aging the barrels, besides the quantity of wine we lose every year by evaporation, then we have the blends that will take hours and hours of work to, to finally match the, the, find the, the, the final blend. So 10 years, you want to talk about 10 years? Just a final comment on the 10 years before we move on. Um, so I, I don't know if you can tell, but I mean, it's lost that ruby kind of color to it. Um, basically, it's also aged in these smaller pour casts, the 650. Again, the wood influence is about the aging and the mellowing and the softening of, of the wine. Um, you're not getting wood flavors from the wood because these are ancient barrels and that's not the point anyway. So you're just evolving the fruit a little bit towards this soft, mellow, um, complex wine. Um, yeah. So we'll move on to the LBV. LBV and vintage. So, another chilled wine, <laughs> and we need another glass. Here we are already, what is terroir? This, this, in LBVs and vintage, and our skill as blender is much more, less more important than each, each our, what, what is the year and the terroir. So our uh, LBV, legally, it has to be uh, approved between the fourth and the sixth year. It can be a uh, bottle all at the same time, or in, in several uh, batches along the years. Also, you can find a refrigerated wine, or you can do anything. So we treat the LBV exactly like a vintage. It's a little bit older uh, in, in terms of aging, between four, uh, four to five years of aging in big wooden vats. But then we blend it in only one time, and we'll, with no anything, no fining, no, no refrigerating, anything. And, and so it can age quite a lot. It, it will be already uh, 
much more easy to drink because it has more softer tannins than the has the vintage. And at the, at the same time, we will have all the characteristics of the year and will be uh, uh, also a very easy wine to lay down and for very long time. So you can drink it straight away. You can use it, uh, you can open the bottle and be one week more or less open because it's more or less used to, to oxygen because he was already four years in a big wooden vat. But, but then if you decide to, to drink it in 10 years or 20 years uh, after, it will be a wonderful one. So, and Anna, Thomas, can you tell us a little bit about 2014 as a vintage? Yes, we can, we can tell. So 2014 as a vintage was quite a typical. Uh, we had a, a, a mild year, I think all the wines, all the years nowadays are quite a typical because may, maybe climate change, everything, but <laughs> we don't have a, we don't have a regular year for many many years. But anyway, we had a, a mild uh, mild uh, winter, a very hot spring, and then we had rain in the end of the year, in the end of the cycle, so uh, the end of, of spring and, and in the summer, and. The, the summer was quite hot. Something we notice it's more the, on climate change, it's more uh, the question of having very mild winters than really very hot uh, summers. The summers we have very hot days, but not like, so the vine doesn't have time to, to adapt, adapt, adapt. adapt. To, to the hot, so you have 25 degrees and then you have uh, 40 on two days and, and then you come back to 25. So it's a little bit like that. But what we see in general is we have more and more warm winters and unfortunately dry winters. So in the end, we had quite a, 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 nice, a nice summer, not, not very hot and especially with uh, nice cold nights, uh, not very cold, but, uh, but easily 18, 20 degrees, which is very good for, for the grapes to, to, to work in the beginning of, of, of dawn. So then in terms of varieties, it's, it's more or less the same varieties which we use for a vintage. So it's, it's Sozel, Toriga Nacional, uh, Turiga Franca and a little bit of some old, from uh, grapes from old vineyards. So we normally tend to to vinif vinified plot by plot or half a plot. In some 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 occasions, we can blend uh, one of two varieties and do a confermentation. In this case, we have a confermentation Turiga Nacional with Sozel. So you have this lovely color. And 14 was also a year which is interesting that we released um, the vintage for Bon Retiro 2014. Um, so it was a year where the Simacor will thrive as well. And that gives a little bit of parallel to, to the 18, 18, which is our last wine. So about this wine, um, I think it's, it's still so silky and fresh and, mm, and a lot of red fruit. He doesn't want me to drink the, the 14, I don't know why. He moved already to, to, to the Bon Retiro. So this is our last release, our last baby. And we have to say we are very pleased with this, this wine. So it's only from Bon Retiro because 18 was uh, a year that it was more complicated in terms of, of employees and personal uh, than then in terms of, of viticulture. 
it was quite a wet year. A lot of houses had a, a lot of, of mildew. We wore completely three treatments in Evermore uh, for mildew, which is a uh, which is nothing, five in the organic, and we didn't have even a small pot of mildew or weed, everything was perfect. And we had a very interesting uh, quantity. And then it started being quite hot uh, days. So, and then happens, which is more or less impossible. We didn't have enough personnel to cut the grapes. It was really a nightmare. You cannot imagine not having, not be able to, to feel a complete ligar in one day. You cannot imagine which is terrifying for us. We only have one, one spot to do that and don't have enough people to trade the lagar. Is that what's really happened with the, the from, from the, the wine from Evermore? They slowly, because they were not picked in time and then they were not properly vinified, something we have very good tends to to go down a little bit because they were already too alcoholic with no freshness and everything. So only at the end of the vintage at Portiro, we could really profit from the magnificent year that was for Hamspiel. So we didn't have hail, we didn't have anything. It was everything, it was perfect. And, and then during vintage time, we didn't have people. Only to say we have around 90 people to pick in Nevermore. In 2018, we didn't have more than 24. It's, it's really, really a nightmare. And so we only have Bortir, and Bortir was like showing beautiful. We, uh, we ferment a lagar from old vineyards, we ferment a lagar of Toriga Nacional, another lagar of Toriga Nacional co fermented Sozel, and then Toriga Franca on that particular year was really, really, really. Uh, Thriving, very consistent, and give the everything on the blend we need. We give it the structure, and and so. Anna, Anna, we got a couple of questions. Uh, that was uh, one is actually what you're talking about, and the other one is related to the organic. Uh, the first question is uh, from our of our guys. How do you select people to help you in picking the grapes and to do uh, obviously the work in the winery? Uh, for the seasonal period? Have you got people that already, you know, been working with you or how do you accept new people as well? Working in the winery is because people work with us. Uh, in, in the vineyard we work with us and then we try to find the, the village nearby and also from students and everything for the maximum people we have. And from the vintage of 19 until uh, next year and everything, we decide to to almost uh, double the quantity of people we have working the door. So we have Venezuelans, uh, Brazilians, Ukrainians, everything. They are uh, living there and work during the vintage because uh, contract, uh, it's not so easy. Some of, of Golets had a contract of um, uh, Asian guys. They start with uh, with mixed dish. Uh, red currants. Red currants, uh, and then they went to Alentejo, which was really, really hot, pick grapes, and then finally they arrived in Ferreira to pick grapes in Douro, and they couldn't couldn't stand to be in the vineyard, so they disappear immediately. So <laughs> they were very good from other regions, but not for Douro. So we need. Um, we need to have the people there and to teach us how to do, how to pick the grapes and, and special to be in, in, take care of them to not let them disappear after two or three days. Because <laughs> we, we don't have proper soil, as you know, it's like this and then a lot of, 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 of It's all terraces, yeah. Yeah, you, so you put your, your feet on that and then you try to, right? and then you have to pick uh, the grapes on a very uh, low position, so it's, and then you have 40 degrees uh, easily and humidity, nothing. So it's really, really, really challenging, especially in Evermore, which is really hot to, 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 to pick grapes. 
Uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, let's let's encourage some of the sommelier in here uh, will uh, we will offer themselves to do some picking so let's say there's lots of wine after the the they day in the vineyard <laughs> we need all the help <laughs> i'm need... sure i'm sure we will have i'm sure we will have some of the sommelier that wants to do an experience in the future Let, let's but let's we, keep the door we, open let me say that we have been asked uh, this year to have some some sommeliers but because of COVID, you know, uh, we we decided, and because of the measures of uh, each country, uh, not to have somebody from abroad, anyone from abroad, this year. Of but of but we have we we had in the in the past some people from 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 the UK. Well, actually, a lot of people from the UK also, and uh, and we, we 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 hope to have some in the near future, but. Obviously, because of these uh, ex extreme circumstances, this year it won't be possible. Yeah. Unfortunately, yes. I mean, yeah. uh, we know it's a some restriction. Uh, it's not easy to manage this one nowadays. No. Let, let's see for next year. Um, yeah. uh, Anna, Anna, Anna Rosa, uh, another question on the organic approach that we have at Ramos Pinto. Uh, th the question is, um, how, difficult is you f how difficult is you face uh, uh, to have this uh, organic uh, approach, maybe initially, and what's the benefit after? Organic approach. So we we left all the um, uh, herbicides herbicides on 2010, which was already completely uh, a challenge because in Nevermore we can walk with a tractor and we can uh, make this. Uh, Cut the, gr the grass between the, the, the leaves, but in Bogotiru, anything you don't have nothing mecha mechanized, so everything has to be cut by hand with a plant. So this is one part of 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 the organic, which is really really difficult. And in years like to this year, 2000, uh, 2020, we had a lot of rain. The grass is is getting bigger every day. And every two weeks, they they have to cut everything. So we need more uh, people to work in, in the vineyard. And th that's in terms of herbicides. Then in terms of organic uh, and biodynamic, which is Urtiga, in biodynamic, we really don't have anything to say now because we are in the second and the third year of, of biodynamic and we still not have anything to say. Organic, what was the, the great different I think it was the soil. The soil is completely different. We have more organic matter, is more deeper, uh, which is something where because we don't have really deeper soils in Doro, everything is a, a small layer, but it seems more deep. It even seems more brown than, than, than white. Really, really changed. And of course, if you have a more, more, uh, you have a better soil, you have better a better vineyard, and a better vineyard, more adapt vineyard, and cheese allows the the roots to go very deep to so very deep, yeah. Also, also they need something to 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 grow. So, and those what you see in, in this in these vineyards, they are more more adapt to to drought drought. To that uh, crazy two or three days of or 45 degrees we have from from coming from hell and then disappear again. They 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 seem to need more of that. But, and of course, more of that vineyards we have more more uh, uh, nice raisins, more uh, grapes, more more uh, with more fresh and with more. Uh, so it's the, the the big difference I think is the soil. That okay. makes the, 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 it will be completely different from. But it also tie, ties into the question about the picking, because we need, because we needed more people during the year for the viticultural practices. And we need the people during harvest. And you can't just ask people to turn up for two weeks here and two weeks there. There is a, trend to keeping more people around in the region um, if not people won't live or work in the region um, of course, yeah. 
And also we cannot do like John Baptiste because it, it's not attractive for anyone to find that he, he can have uh, 200 people, 600 people uh, coming to pick the grapes for two weeks, but the, the salaries, the, uh, the, wages. the wages in France are much more interesting than, than in Portugal. So we simply don't have, it. it's not attractive to go to doors so, so hot with no soil, only, only stones and uh, so it's not easy to find people we, we, we what we are doing now which is much more expensive is is to have the people with us all the time because uh, we really need to to improve our farming and it's it, it's beautiful you you yeah. especially during the winter time when you don't have any leaves and, and no and no weeds and anything, you look at our vineyard, you look at our neighbors, and they're dead. And uh, we are see, not. <laughs> yeah, you see, obviously that's uh, that's a result of the organic approach and the biodynamic approach. Obviously, there's much more vegetation into into the plants. They are more alive uh, compared really to a different alive. approach. That's that's uh, that's that's fantastic to see. I'm sure. Yeah, as far as I remember, last time I was in Doro for uh, uh, autumn, we see all the uh, red leaves, and uh, so I think it's a spectacular panorama, and, and the view is, uh, is, is unbelievable. Yeah, I got a fantastic memory. Um, Christina, uh, no more question from my side, from my guys. Uh, have you received any on your personal chat or anything? Um, I've, got, I've got one. Um, Anna Thomas, over the last decade, we've seen quite a number of vintage port declarations. So. The usual was three every decade, whereas we've seen a run from 2014 onwards. Why is that? Well, I, I think I cannot talk about, about all, all, all the, but I think it's, we have more major declarations, of course, but in, in small quantity and in a way, everyone has improved viticulture. So you will have more and more easily to do uh, major declarations or uh, like 16, we haven't done anything because we have Hale and Eva More and some of our colleagues have done beautiful vintage. And this year in 18, we have a, a wonderful Bortil full of character, full of elegance, a very, a very dry vintage. And some of our colleagues have single quintas, which is have on that particular spot, the year was fantastic, but in the same quinta, another vineyard or a, a colleague nearby can have the hail or can have really growth and, and or no people to picking the, the grapes or whatever. And we have different things. So we are more not seeing what the others are doing, but really what nature gave us and do and, and then do a vintage or a, a single quinta. And the single quinta is also an amazing, it's exactly the same thing. You have you have single quintas like Noval or Stone Terrace, they are much more expensive than the, the house, the uh, the house vintage. So a single quinta, it's exactly how it was that wine on 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 that that particular vineyard, that particular spot. A major declaration, it means more or less all around the Doro, we have wonderful uh, wines all around and probably you had wonderful uh, uh, figs and wonderful <laughs> tomatoes and everything it means normally it's a very good year and everything was good and this is mainly i think viticulture and then of course we don't have any rain so we can if you we have a very good viticulture and with lovely weather we can manage the vineyard uh, in a way to, to, to produce more regular good things Great, thank you. Well, um, that was all the questions from our side. Um, massive thank you to Anna, Anna and Thomas for taking us through the wonderful wines and history of Ramos Pinto. Um, and thanks to all of you for joining us. Um, next week at 11 o'clock, uh, we're going to be joined by Nicola Glumino from Pichon Comtesse, who's going to be talking to us about the recent developments um, in Bordeaux and looking at the 2019 vintage that has just been released. Um, so on behalf of Mario and myself, thanks everyone for joining um, and we'll see you all next week. See you. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, Anna. Yeah. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Thomas. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.